Hi everybody, welcome back to the Zenus Super Duty build. I am working on the outboard slats and mounting the aero LED uh, wig, lag, wig wag lights on those slats. All right, so before we get started kind of showing you what I'm doing here or what I've done, I gotta tell you my, my outboard slat story here because I did ruin my first two outboard slats. If you guys are familiar with these or not familiar with them, these slats are a one piece skin. They start right here, they go around the front, there's kind of a 90 degree bend here done at the factory. But other than that, it just comes straight up. And then you have to bend it over the, the ribs and then this piece back here has to, you have to fold the front piece under the back piece. They're, they're really hard to build actually. I think it'd be so much easier if this was a two piece, you know, a, a top and a bottom skin. But anyway, that's, this is the way they are. So they're hard to build. You do need a couple people to do it. But I always try everything myself because like I said, sometimes it's hard to get people over here. So the first slat that I built, I put in the ribs. I, um, you know, I, I riveted them to the bottom, which is what you're supposed to do. I used a big two by four to bring that, to fold that skin over. And as I was doing that and handling it, somehow I, I grabbed it close to like where one of the ribs were. And I put like a, a couple little wrinkles in the skin. And it wasn't really that bad. It was something where I think a little bit of Bondo, I could have fixed it and it'd be fine after it's painted. So I, I built that slat, or at least riveted it all, or clecoed it all together. Then I started the second one. But on the second one, I figured I'd better get some help. So I had my neighbor Gordon come over and I had this genius idea of how to do this. What I did was I riveted the bottom of all the, the ribs and then we fold it over and you put the clecos and rivets in the top. So if you could imagine the bottom being riveted, what we did was we, we put the slat like this off the edge of the table and then we uh, put the wood on here and bent it down like this so that when we rolled it over, I could put the clecos in the holes on the bottom. If we did it all the way on the table, obviously you can't get to the holes in the rib. So we had it just off the table enough to get the clecos in the rib. Well, as you could imagine, when you take a structure that, that's completely unsupported and you bend it off the edge of a table, it just completely crushed the slat. <laughs> so that one got completely ruined. It just had like this huge dent out here in the end. So that one was ruined. Obviously I had to replace it. And I figured if I'm going to replace that one, I might as well just replace both of them. So I got two brand new slats from Zenith. But the new slats were a little bit different. Since my original kit, Zenith has updated these outboard slats. I also think, I think he said, uh, or Roger said that they updated the inboard ones too. But uh, these ones have four ribs in them and the old ones, my original ones only had two ribs. So Zenith did send me two more ribs for each slat uh, to put in here. Um, but that does present a little bit of a problem because the other slat, the old slats, they didn't have a rib at the very outboard end here. They just had the, the plastic wing tip in there and then it went in and then the next rib was, I don't know, somewhere around like right here. So you could rivet the whole thing together and then work on your light assembly through here. Once it's all done, then you just put on the plastic tip. This is a little bit different because obviously there's another rib right here, that's this rib. And so you have to kind of put in your whole light assembly and then rivet in the rib and then the plastic wing tip. So uh, once, this is, once this is in, you really can't get to the wires or anything now because there's a, a rib right here. So this is where I'm at now on the slats. Both of them have the, the hole cut out for the light and I have the light assembly here. This is from Aero LEDs. They're super, super nice lights. They got heat sinks on the back. And you can see, see that Zenith has a nice little system here to where the light itself gets mounted to this back plate and there's three nut plates that go in there and then these big screws here with springs on them. And make sure you polish your screws too because if you don't, you will lose some uh, cruise performance in your airplane. So anyway, you, with these springs in here, it's kind of like the headlight in your car. You can adjust the angle of the lights to kind of point them where you want. However, it's kind of useless because you have to set them now before you install it. Because as we're gonna see here later in the video, cause I plan on finishing this up today, this little lens 
goes on the inside like this, and then uh, you know everything gets riveted behind there. So once it's riveted together, there's no way to get to those screws to adjust the lights. So that's where I'm at right now. Now here's the other thing that I didn't really consider when I was building the wings originally and installing the wiring. Because at that point, it's kind of hard, you know, I always try to think ahead, but it's kind of hard to think that far ahead when you're, when you're just kind of clicking a wing together and running the wires. But this is the light or the wire, this is the wire for the, the nav and, and strobes out on the tip. This is the wire for the lights and the slats. And the way I have it now is it's not really long enough to go from here and then down to about here and then to come out into the slat. And even if it was, unless I have this connector on the outside of the wing, um, there's no way to take the slat on and off without cutting the wire. Because if I have the wire coming out of the slat and then going through a grommet here and then inside, well then I'd have to, you know, the most easiest thing would be to, to put an access cover in the wing tip. But if you don't have that, you'd have to take the wing tip off to unplug it. And then once you unplug it, you know, how do you get this connector pulled through the skin? So you'd probably have to cut the wire. So I've been trying to think of how I'm going to wire this so that I can remove the slat. And this is what I've come up with on mine. I have a little tiny access hole in the back of the slat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wire here and I'm gonna make like just basically a little extension cord. So the light will be in the slat with a wire and a connector. And then this one will go in here with another connector and connect to the light. And then it'll come out and from there, it'll go through the wing with a connector to connect to that wire. <laughs> and if that doesn't make any sense, um, I think by the end of the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, here is the lens, I mean the, uh, the whole light assembly put together. And if we climb up a little ladder right here, you can see how it goes together. There's five rivets on the top, five on the bottom. These three little rivets right here, the plans call for sheet metal screws, but I don't really see the purpose of putting sheet metal screws in there because I can't remove that lens even if I wanted to because there's a rib on the end, so you might as well just rivet it in. And one of the, the other thing I had to do too, uh, which I didn't show, is just because I wanted to work and not film. Uh, this lens does have to be trimmed on the top and bottom, and it's about this long from here to about here, so you have to trim this too. But also, I put this in a little uh, oven to melt it because the curve of this lens isn't the same as the curve of the slat. So what I did was I got this really soft, took it out of the oven and put it on the here to get the exact curve. That's why on here, it's just super tight because it's, it's uh, on both sides here, it's actually formed to this slat. Now you'll notice that not only can I take, I cannot take the lens out because of that rib, but I also can't get to these screws to uh, adjust the angle of the light. And for me, it's not a big deal because this is not a landing light. It's simply a recognition light so people can see me in the pattern or just flying around. So it doesn't matter exactly where it's pointed, like, you know, to within a few degrees. Um, so it, it doesn't really matter where it's pointed. It is what it is now. But you can't get to the screws to adjust it. And I thought about putting the lens on the outside of the slat and then just putting some sealant around the lens or whatever. But I don't know, I just chose to do it like this, to put it inside to where it goes. It fits nicely in that little groove that's in this black piece. Um, so it is what it is. I didn't really want it on the outside. I kind of like the looks of this better. And like I said, adjusting these really isn't all that important. I'll turn it on and show you because I have it temporary, temporarily plugged in. Um, and you can see how this, this wire right here really isn't long enough to go all the way up into here. The other thing to note is uh, Aero LEDs provides really, really nice, simple wiring diagrams uh, with their lights. And for this one here, you'll see this blue wire. It's not used for anything, but the green one is. On the light on the other wing, the green one is not used and the blue one is used. Um, it might sound confusing, but it's really not. Once you look at the wiring, the wiring diagram, it's really simple to wire. But now that it's connected up, 
Let's give it a try. All right, so we turn the master switch on, and you can see my switch right here. If I come up one position, it's a recognition light. I know it doesn't look like it in a video, but that is absolutely blinding to look at. And if I come up to wigwag, it, it uh, alternates with the other wing. Right now, it looks like it's just flashing, but if I had the other one on, the right wing, you'd see that they're actually alternating, which is the wigwag. Pretty cool. So I can have them just both on, or if I really want to attract attention to myself, I can wigwag them, or I can turn them off. Now let's say someday I'm out flying in the bush. No wait, let's say I'm dog fighting somebody and uh, I get hit with some bullets in the very leaning edge of my slat. And I have to take that slat off to replace it. But what I don't wanna have to do is cut a hole in here, the wingtip, or cut a wire to get this off. I wanna make it removable. So this little access cover right here, I'm just going, I'll make, and then it will be held on here with just a couple little sheet metal screws. But I'll show you what I plan on doing with the little extension wire to make this removable without having to cut any wires. All right, I have my slat and my wing. Inside the slat here, this is my light, and let's just say this is the wire with the connector. And then in my wing, I have the wire with the connector. What I'm going to do is I'll have a wire come in here with the connector, and these two will be connected together. And then what I'm, that, remember that little access hole on the back? That'll be a rectangular little access cover like this. It'll have maybe like four little sheet metal screws. And I'll have this wire go through that access cover. And when it comes out the other side, I'll put a connector on it. So here's the connector on there. So basically now when I put this access cover back onto the, or basically what I can do before I put this on is I can hook these two up so this will come out, actually this one <laughs> will come in here and we'll have them connected together like that. And then this, this access cover will just slide over the wire with a little grommet and then I'll put these four sheet metal screws and hold it. So if I ever have to take this slat off, I just take out four little sheet metal screws, pull this access cover back, kind of pull this wire out, disconnect this connector here, and then that will be able to come off. Now, if I was doing this all over again, or knowing what I know now, what I would do, I don't have an eraser, what I would do is I would just make this wire long enough to come out here. Before I put the connector on here, I just drew a little hole in this access cover, so I'd have another access cover with a little hole in it. And then I'd put the connector on it, and it would just be one wire. All I'd have to do is put this in the wing, connect it, and then push the little access cover on there. But since this wire in the wing isn't long enough, I need to have that little extension cord in the middle. It'll work fine. It's just a little, one more connection that I'll have. But, you know, it, like I said, if I would have known that in the beginning, I would have just made that wire longer. Well, another hour or so later, and I have both of them done. Let's turn it on and see how it looks. I am glad those are done. So the leading edge slats are completely done other than I just have to join the inboard and outboards. So everything else is done with them. It's nice to finally have those holes cut in the slats, the lights in there, they're all wired. Everything's pretty much ready to go. Once we get some warm weather, I can prime and paint them, but I do still have to put on the, uh, the little slat tip, just like I did on the inboard one here. I have to do that on the outboard. So maybe I'll finish that up, then I'll call them completely done. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, visit kitplaneenthusiast.com for some great products for your Zenith airplane.